Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. I hope all of you are doing well, preparing well for the upcoming prelims examination. This is a video session on daily news and editorial analysis dated 28th of September. And before I begin with the discussion, I expect that all of you must be preparing well for the MCQs. MCQs is practice is very important nowadays. UPSC has changed its pattern. 2023 में आपने देखा हुआ जिस तरह से पैटर्न चेंज हुई है उस चेंज को कैटर करने के लिए जरूरी है कि आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा एम के सवाल को प्रैक्टिस करें वी हैव अ डेडिकेटेड प्रोग्राम फॉर द एम सी क्यूज वी हैव अश्चय ऑल इंडिया टेस्ट सीरीज प्रोग्राम वेर फोर्टी नाइन हंड्रेड प्लस क्वेश्चन अलॉन्ग विद द वीडियो डिस्कशन डेमो टेस्ट एंड फ्री मैगजीन्स विल बी प्रोवाइडेड फॉर कंटेंट एनरिचमेंट यू कैन चेक आउट दिस प्रोग्राम दिस इज अ क्यू आर कोड फॉर ईजी रजिस्ट्रेशन and for more details you can refer to our website also now let's get started with the discussion and before i start with the discussion i'll give you the news glimpses that i'll be discussing for you with today the first news is about the aging population this is a report which has come up by the un fpa and they have talked in detail about the india's population we'll see the detail the relevant part of the gender studies is mentioned over here Now the second important news is about the digital bill it will increase the part of the ambit for the online censorship and government will strengthen its power when it comes to the censure third important news is about the lok sabha this is basically with regards to the conduct rule that is pending for the houses so there are some other details coming out from this the second important second last important news is about the manipur government they have increased the aspa that is arms force special power act इसको बढ़ाई गई है कुछ स्पेसिफिक डिस्ट्रिक्स पे ताकि इसके जो चेक एंड बैलेंसेस हैं उनको देखा जा सके वी हैव बीन विटनेसिंग क्वाइट द पार्ट ऑफ लॉ एंड ऑर्डर इज नॉट गुड इन मनी इन द अदर न्यूज द लास्ट विल कंक्लूड विद एडिटोरियल दैट टॉक्स अबाउट वुमेन रिजर्वेशन एंड जेंडर इक्वालिटी द रेलिवेंट पार्ट ऑफ द जेंडर स्टडी सिलेबस इज मैंशन ओवर हेयर ना लेट गेट स्टार्ट विद डिटेल डिस्कशन सो द फर्स्ट दैट इज इंडियाज एजिंग पॉपुलेशन रिसेंटली एक रिपोर्ट रिलीज की गई है बाय द यूनाइटेड नेशन पॉपुलेशन फंड दिस इज यू एन एफ यू एन एफ पी ए राइट इन्होंने डिटेल रिलीज की है रिपोर्ट को और उन्होंने बताया दैट इंडियाज एडर्ली पॉपुलेशन विल डबल बाई ट्वेंटी फिफ्टी सो दिस इज अ डेटा दैट हैज बिन कम अप एंड समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एट दिस जंक्शन जहाँ पे इंडिया की जो पॉपुलेशन पोटेंशियल है जो डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंट है उसके हमें बेनिफिट्स इससे पहले लेने की जरूरत पड़ेगी Now moving ahead with the part, what is UNFPA report all about? अगर UNF that is United Nation Population Fund की बात करें, they have projected that the number of elderly people in the world is likely to double. They they have said that this is likely to double, and the time frame that they have come up is with 2050. 2050 तक double होने के बाद की है, and these elderly population is to 22 percent of the total population. Now whatever population will be, this will mount to a total of 22% परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल पॉपुलेशन जो भी टोटल पॉपुलेशन है उनकी ट्वेंटी टू परसेंट जो पॉपुलेशन होंगी वो एडरली पॉपुलेशन होंगी नाउ स्पेसिफिकली लुकिंग इन टू इंडियाज कंटेक्स एंड एशियाज कंटेक्स में बात करें एशिया इज होम टू फिफ्टी एट परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल पॉपुलेशन अमॉन्ग द टोटल पॉपुलेशन जो वर्ल्ड की टोटल पॉपुलेशन है एशिया कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट फिफ्टी एट परसेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन फॉर ओल्डर्स एंड सिक्स फोर्टी नाइन मिलियन इंडिविजुअल आर एज अब सिक्सटी सो दीज आर द डेटा दोज ऑफ यू आर हॉविंग जियोग्राफी एज एन ऑप्शन जिनका जियोग्राफी ऑप्शनल है उनके लिए इस तरह के डेटा काफी रेलिवेंट है फॉर ह्यूमन जियोग्राफी यू कैन डायरेक्टली गेट अ क्वेश्चन इन दिस राइट ना इन द नेक्स्ट थ्री डे के आने वाले तीन दशकों में बात की गई है दैट द शेयर ऑफ द ओल्डर पीपल विद देर एब्सल्यूट नंबर विल बी डबल टू वन पॉइंट थ्री बिलियन एंड दिस विल बी ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट बाय ट्वेंटी फिफ्टी एज ऑफ नाउ दिस इज ट्वेंटी टू परसेंट इट विल ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीज टू ट्वेंटी so these are some of the important data even if you are writing a gender studies paper too to wahan ke liye bhi aap important jo important relevant information se unko note kar sakte hain now india ke demographic dividend ki baat kare how will be performing by 2050 this is something you have to take a note now this was a report which has been published by unfp aur inhone india aging report mein batayi hai that india is not an exception to this phenomena and india will also have the double populations by 2050 this is what the report has specifically highlighted and as per the data that is by 
India is home to 149 million people. 149 million individuals जो हैं यहाँ पे 60 age group में, right? So these are age 60, which is 10% of the country's population. So these population which is there is 10% of India's total population. Now this year the elderly, which is double to reach by 20.8% of the total population. और ये आने वाले समय में, this is by 2050, it will increase to 20.8%. So this is the anticipations that India's population aged above 60 will be 20.8 percent of the total populations. Now, if you look at the image, you will get the clarity like किस तरह से जो population है वो बढ़ रही हैं और हर एक countries की क्या data है. So for India, we have this number, this particular color code denote 2016 and this is for 2015. This is actually 2017. Just to correct, this is 2017 and 2015. For India, this is a number, then China, Niger, United States, Indonesia, Pakistan, Brazil, Bangladesh, Congo, and Ethiopia. So these are the data. I mean, you can use the top three countries and even you can take top five countries for the consideration. Now, India's aging index, this is something again important. So the report says that the southern states, specifically the southern states, so these states include Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Telangana. They are like and the selected state of northern states, Himachal Pradesh or Punjab ki baat kare. In ki elderly population zada hai on the average, this is 10.1 percent, right? And the gap is expected to widen by 2036. And India's aging index, which is a measure for the number of 100 per children in the population, which is 39 point, 39 as per 2021. So this number is again important. 39 hai 2021 ke data ke zaap se. Aur jo aging index nikali jati hai wo elderly per children ke zaap se. How many elderly people are there per 100 children. So this is how we calculate the aging index in the country. This is a global index that is calculated across the globe. Now kuch recommendations di gai hai UNFPA ke taraf se. The Schemes for the elderly people need to be augmented or it's more than that strengthen can be used. Finance is an important aspect. It's a sad sad capacity building. You see, government has actually come up with the programs. If we talk about social security programs, social security scheme, we'll call it the SSS. So social security scheme is a lot more important. There are some schemes that is actually working by the government of India and even by the state government. Right? So, dono government mil ke kaam kar rahi hain pe, but we need to further increase that. Community organizations promoting the digital literacy is this required. Ministerial committee that is shaping the elderly welfare policy need to work upon. Aur iske saath saath jo parliamentary standing committees hain, unko bhi apni recommendations dheni ke zarat hai. Now, there is a corporate initiative for joyful aging, social assistance and elderly abuse awareness. So this also need to be checked upon and how it can be checked with the rules of law. Or if you need to get the law, then you need to get the law too. Now UNFP underlined that these need to strengthen the part of social security including the old age pension. This is already there but the fund needs to increase it more and more. Across the landscape, across the landscape, with the people employed in the informal sector that is devoid with the benefits. As a kai loge, they are not actually availing the benefits. So benefits are not being availed by them. So these people also need to be the part of social security scheme by the government of India. Now moving ahead with the other news that is the digital bill may expand the online censorship. Here the government of India will have the part of more power when it comes to censorship. Or ye khas karke jo government ki Digital India Bill, है, we call it DIB, right? Or DI Bill. So this actually make the changes to Section 69 of IT Act. So IT Act की Section 69 है, जो कि empower करती है government को to censure. This will be further augmented and giving more power to the central government. Now, what is Digital India Bill 2023? This is again a point to be noted. ये जो topic है, या आपके problems और means दोनों में relevant है. So make sure you take a note of this. This aims to replace the existing Information Act of 2000 and provide comprehensive oversight for digital landscape. See, if you see the regulation, if the central government ki baat kare, central government is taking the entire care for the part when it comes to the legislative process, when it comes to the rule making, right? And it seeks to address the modern challenges, just as cyber crimes ki baat kare. We have data protection, deep fakes, and online safety. 
ऑलरेडी देर आर सम गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज दैट इज वर्किंग अगर बात करें सी ए आर टी रिस्पॉन्स टीम है सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट की दैट इज ऑल्सो वर्किंग सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द क्विक रिस्पॉन्स टीम वर्किंग विद द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया नॉ द बिल इंट्रोड्यूस द क्लासिफिकेशन सिस्टम फॉर द इंटरमीडियज बेस्ड ऑन द रिस्क साइज अलॉइंग अ टेलर्ड रेगुलेशन सो वाई टेलर्ड रेगुलेशन बिकॉज दिस विल बी स्पेसिफिकली लुकिंग इन टू द पार्ट ऑफ सेंसरशिप राइट विच इज एसेंशियली रिक्वायर्ड and the bill will pose a dedicated internet regulatory authority with effective governance so the overall governance overall governance ki agar baat kare this will improve and it will further strengthen the government stand on the censorship now one thing that is important to be noted in this context jo aapke liye janna zaruri hai i'll show something so that it will help you now the digital india bill has four important broad framework first it has a component that is the digital personal data protection act uske baad jo second important component hai that is the national data governance policy third we have the ipc amendment for the cyber crimes and then we have dia rule right so digital india act ke jo rules hain usme kuch aur cheezon ko incorporate ki gayi hai taki government aur strengthen ho kar ke censorship ko control kar pae now you can even utilize this part in the mains agar aap mains mein likh rahe hain to aap is tarah ke diagrams bhi wahan bana pae Now, what is Section sixty nine of the IT Act? I think most of you must be aware of this IT Act. It actually empower the government to content, the uh, content blocking, the online content, hai, which is against the government, which is against the national security, or if public order got disrupted, that is, our neighboring country, if there is a friendly relations, if there is any kind of problem, in those conditions, the government Section sixty nine to invoke, and for the IT Act, they can regulate and control the part of content which is published online. Right? Now, Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section sixty nine of the IT Act, which is Section सुप्रीम कोर्ट की जजमेंट है के एस पुट्टास्वामी की वहां पे भी राइट टू प्राइवेसी की बातें कही गई है द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज सीक्स टू रिलीज अ लार्जर विजन ऑफ डिजिटल इकोनॉमी जिसके थ्रू एक कम्प्रीहेंसिव डिजिटल इंडिया एक्ट बनाने की बात की है एंड देर विल बी द कम्प्लीट डिजिटल इंडिया स्टैक दैट विल बी ऑल्सो फंक्शनिंग एंड गवर्नमेंट इज सेट अप टू पार्ट ऑफ द डिजिटल पर्सनल डेटा प्रोटेक्शन बिल इन द पार्लियमेंट दिफ दिस विल बी पास इट विल हैव मोर स्ट्रेंथन Uh, in the terms of security in terms of privacy in terms of government making regulations to the larger extent now code of conduct in the lower house in the parliament this is uh, the news that is there why kyunki parliament mein basically naye parliament bill mein shifting ho gayi hai but agar rules ki baat kare jo long pending demand hai us pe abhi tak members ke privilege ko lekar ke koi zyada kaam nahi hua we need to work on the code also that how the code of conduct should actually functions in the lower houses right so we have to see how this will actually function so pending issues ki agar baat kare jo do sabse badi important pending issue hai the first is about the conduct of the member of houses in the lok sabha this is specifically in lok sabha and this is about the code of conduct or you can say coc and third is regarding second is regarding the declarations of member business interest recently we have come across jahan pe privilege ko lekar ke kafi zyada baat hui thi in the recent time there are a lot of debate which is you know going far away from the decorum which has to be maintained in the parliament so these two definitely or abhi india mein jis tarah se cheeze chal rahi hain yahan pe ise change karne ki zarurat hai both the conditions has been long applicable with the member of rajya sabha now in the case of rajya sabha agar rajya sabha ki baat kare in mein ye rules applicable hai this is only exempted or not fully implemented in the lok sabha so this involve mp seeking the commitment to their good behavior and a proper conduct so there are some etiquettes that has to be followed in parliament parliament ki agar baat kare specifically when i talks about parliament i talks both about rajya sabha as well as for the lok sabha for rajya sabha we already have it for lok sabha we require it immediately now conduct of lok sabha ki agar baat kare how the code of conduct should actually there 2014 में एक कमेटी बनाई गई थी लोकसभा एथिक्स कमेटी जिन्होंने प्रपोज किया था स्पीकर को कि एक रिकमेंडेशन होनी चाहिए जहां पे लोकसभा रूल कमेटी इस रिपोर्ट को देखे और सारे मेंबर्स के कंडक्ट को एक्चुअली एग्जामिन करे नी हैव एथिक्स कमेटी डेडिकेटली अगर बात करें परमानेंट बेसिस पे देर एथिक्स कमेटी 
विच मैंडेट्स द क्रिएटिंग फॉर द मेंबर कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट इंडिविजुअल मेंबर की कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट की अगर बात करें लाइक फॉर इलेक्शन वी हैव ए कोड ऑफ मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट राइट मॉडल कोड एम जैसे कहते हैं उस तरह से पार्लियामेंट के लिए भी एक मेंबर्स कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट होती है विच इज एक्चुअली फंक्शनल और राज्यसभा में ये ऑलरेडी मेंटेन है बट वी आर मिसिंग आउट स्पेसिफिकली फॉर द लोकसभा राइट ना जो इथिक्स कमिटी है राज्यसभा की वो कब बनी थी इसके क्या बेसिक्स है यू नीड टू नो सो दिस वॉज अथिक्स कमिटी विच इनोग्रेटेड बाय द चेयरमैन के आर नारायण ऑन मे थर्टी नाइनटीन नाइनटी और इसका मेन पर्पज जो था इज टू हैव मोरल एंड इथिकल कंडक्ट एंड एग्जामिन द मिस कंडक्ट विच इज देयर बाय द मेंबर्स सो द मेंबर्स इंक्लूड एम फॉर बोथ द राज्यसभा एंड लोकसभा बट लोकसभा के लिए अभी स्पेसिफिकली कुछ है नहीं सो दिस इज ओनली फंक्शन फॉर द राज्यसभा द रूल टू नाइनटी थ्री मैंडेट्स द रजिस्टर ऑफ अ मेंबर इंटरेस्ट फॉर अ मेंबर्स इंस्पेक्शन और फोर्थ रिपोर्ट अडॉप्ट की गई थी टू थाउजेंड फाइव में फोर्टीन मेंबर पॉइंट फॉर द कंडक्ट वे स्टिल इन इफेक्ट सो दिस इज हाउ राज्यसभा इज एक्चुअली फंक्शनिंग विद ऑल दिस रूल विच इज एज ऑफ नाउ फंक्शनल वी आर लैकिंग विद लोकसभा एंड वेरी सुन इट इज एसेंशियली रिक्वायर्ड यूपीएससी के मेंस एग्जामिनेशन में सी के मेंस एग्जामिनेशन में आप पे इससे पे भी सवाल पूछे जा सकते हैं दैट हाउ फार इट इज एसेंशियल रिक्वायर्ड टू कम अप विद द कंडक्ट इन द लोकसभा राइट तो यू कैन अकॉर्डिंगली आंसर दैट क्वेश्चंस नाउ मूविंग अहेड विद अदर न्यूज दैट इज मणिपुर गवर्नमेंट एक्सटेंड एज पर इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट रिसेंटली मणिपुर के गवर्नमेंट ने ये ऑर्डर दिया दिस इज मणिपुर होम डिपार्टमेंट राइट जो होम मिनिस्ट्री होती है उन्होंने ऑर्डर रिलीज किया दिस इज ऑन द एड एंड एडवाइज ऑफ द गवर्नर गवर्नर के फाइनल अप्रूवल के बाद इसे कुछ डिस्ट्रिक्स में बढ़ाए गए हैं फॉर द नेक्स्ट सिक्स मंथ विच विल बी एप्लीकेबल एंड स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम अक्टूबर फर्स्ट ना क्या डिटेल्स है इसके बारे में आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ द आर्म फुल स्पेशल पावर एक्ट आई गिव यू द ब्रीफ अबाउट दिस सो इसमें अभी जो रिसेंट डिसीजन ली है मणिपुर गवर्नमेंट ने नाइनटीन पुलिस स्टेशन को इंक्लूड किया है ऑन द सेवन डिस्ट्रिक्ट इम्फाल वैली के में खास करके इसको एक्सटेंशन जो की गई है दिस एक्सटेंशन विल कंटिन्यू फॉर सिक्स मंथ राइट जो डिस्टर्ब एरिया है मणिपुर के दैट विल रिमेन इन द पर्टिकुलर एरिया और ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी को प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए आसपा को बढ़ाई गई है सिंस 2002 थाउजेंड टू आसपा है रिमूव की गई थी और मेतीस कम्युनिटीज में देखा गया था दैट थिंग्स आर इम्प्रूविंग सो गवर्नमेंट वॉज ग्रेजुअली रिमूविंग द आसपा बट द थिंग्स आर वर्स्टिंग इन मणिपुर एज ऑफ नाउ दिस हैज बिन मोर स्ट्रेंथ राइट तो एक्सटेंशन ऑफ आसपा की अगर बात करें जब ये एक्सटेंशन होगी तो आर्मी और आसाम राइफल किसी भी तरह के ऑपरेशंस बिना वहाँ के स्टेट पुलिस के परमिशन के नहीं कर पाएंगे सो दीज आर द चेंजेस दैट विल बी मैंडेटेड नाउ अथॉरिटीज ऑफ आसपा नोटिफिकेशन दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट टू बी नोटेड किस तरह से जो आसपा की रेगुलेशन है या फिर उसकी एक्सटेंशन है किसके पास अथॉरिटी है सी एक्चुअली इफ यू गो बाय रूल द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एज वेल एज द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट when i say union government this is the mha the ministry of home affairs these are the the authority that can invoke the part of aspa and currently union home ministry or the ministry of home affairs has issued notification that this will be only applicable in nagaland and arunachal pradesh while manipur and assam have issued their own notification in this regard now moving ahead with the editorial for the day the talks about the women reservation and gender equality which is something very important parliament has recently passed a bill uh, the one third of the reservation will be given to women so we'll just see the details and how the gender equality can be promoted upsc ke ye favorite topics mein hai gender equality they have been frequently asking every year upsc ke mains mein aapko gender equality pe sawal mil jayenge now what are the issue first we'll see the delimitation exercises then the societal approach उसके अलावे मागालेर उरीमई हो गई दिस इज अ वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट स्कीम फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु जस्ट पार्डन मी फॉर द प्रोनाउंसिएशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीम एंड द वे फॉरवर्ड विल सी द डिटेल्स एंड मूव अहेड विद द पार्ट ऑफ द कंक्लूजन आल्सो सो रिसेंटली पार्लियामेंट ने पास किया था वुमेन रिजर्वेशन बिल जहां पे वन थर्ड रिजर्वेशन दी गई है वुमेन को दिस इज स्पेसिफिकली फॉर लोकसभा एंड द स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली Now the current female participation in India as of now is 15%. This is an important point. You can take a note of this. Now globally, if we talk about India's ranking, India's 141 ranking is 199, 193 countries may for the global women representation, which is definitely not good. We need to improve that. Or even some other such countries like Pakistan, South Africa, Kenya, they have a good number of women representations. 
Now, reservation for the women in the election in the local bodies in India is also increasing with the participations in the governance. So, we also need to work upon where we can bottom-up approach ke kaam kar sakte hai. by bottom-up approach I mean see when we have a lower hierarchy we can work on level pe kaam kar sakte hai. then we have the part of uh, assemblies where we have commissioners or just like legislative municipal bodies hai, pe. then we have at district level then we have at state level this way the functions are more smooth and women's participation is more strengthened. Now, delimitation exercise is something which is inevitable in this context. Uske bina reservations ke liye aage badna possible nahi hoga. To ye census abhi tak hui nahi hai. Jo last census frozen hai, wo 1976 se frozen hai. Southern states ki agar baat kare, women, uh, the part of reducing population is there with the focus on the women measures is required. Arunapalli agar dekhe, jo better women empowerment indicators hai, they may lose parliament seats in the delimitation exercise. As I said, if there are delimitation exercises, then the women's seats will decrease the number of women's seats or increase the number This is again a point that the expert are saying the number might decrease. Now, the legislative reform is a new connection that has a future law, possibly delayed until the next Lok Sabha elections. Right? So, for 2024, this is sure that the 2024 elections will not be implemented because the census is pending. By 2029, the upcoming election next to this will possibly see the reservation of the women. Now, societal approach ki baat kare. See, uh, we have a patriarchal society. These are the brutal truth that we have to acknowledge. And despite the good law intention, we need to work on the societal aspect. Jahan pe gender role pe hume kaam karne ki hai. Women representations in the elected, both in the lower female representation need to be have a proper and adequate representation at the right level at the right time now true gender justice ki agar baat kare iske liye hame jo domestic responsibilities hain including the unpaid labor isse kam karne ki zarurat hai why this need to be reduced ek data hai ministry of program and implementation ki taraf se this is mospi and they have come up with the data jahan pe time survey batayi gayi hai ki ek men aur ek women kitni kaam karti hai so 97% 97 minutes are spent on men on a daily basis and Basically, this is unpaid and services for women goes to 299 minutes. So, if there is a lot of women's disproportionate proportion, then the responsibility of women in the mainstream will be very low. So, we need to maintain this disparity and ensure that the women are participating at the mainstream to the larger extent. Now, there is a scheme uh, which is a women rights scheme in Tamil Nadu, right? And this is basically a cash transfer program by the government. The primary aim is for the government to provide financial assistance to women bank account. This directly, say, DBT bhi bol sakte, direct benefit transfers where domestically expenses for women. Ko paise diye jate so this type of a scheme will definitely empower women. Women empowerment is a very important scheme. Now the way forward. Increasing women representation is very important for the far time bound representations and governments must have a responsibility to ensure reservation model at their success. So this should be fully implemented. Why? Because to make things more success, reservation for women will be essentially required. Role of National Commission for Women, this is NCW. They also need to have a proactive role. In ki bhi proactive role ki zarurat padegi. And the Women Empowerment Committee, the Parliamentary Committee, they can also come up with their recommendations. Recognizing the paid labor with equitable sharing of the household duty is crucial for gender equality reform. Now, when it comes to gender equality reform, the baat kare GE, uh, GER, gender equality reform. Now, this is something which is again important and this can be a mainstream topic for civil services mains examination. Mains mein aap pe gender equality pe bhi sawaal puche jayenge and this has been a frequent question which has been there, right? Aap gender equality, women empowerment pe, women emancipations pe humne aapne sawaal dekhe hai. So this is something that you need to uh, take into considerations. Aur aap is mein women ki jo khasi representations hai legislative processes mein, usko badhani ke liye kya aur ahem kadam liye ja sakte hai? You can highlight. Now moving ahead with the answers and discussion for the questions of yesterday. So first, the correct option is A, or I have asked you basically the foot and mouth disease. So, there are correct options. You can check it. Statement 2 was incorrect. That it's transmitted for human, and human instances are usually for cell timing, synthesis, and viral diseases. right? And whatever discussion they are, we are having, either you can take a screenshot 
and you can pause this video and even revise for the better purposes. C uh, basically the second question is okay, statement C hai. so temple ke mein aap se tha. it is in Malamalapuram in Tamil Nadu Coromandel coast it is one of the South Asia's oldest structurally rock cut stone temple 1984 mein se thi, and these all statements are correct UNESCO world heritage site mein se mention kiya gaya. Now, moving ahead with the today's MCQ your participation ki kafi zyada isme zarurat hai do participate and write your answer in the comment section down below right i'll say i'll start with the question for the day the first question is about the gulf of thailand it is situated in the west pacific ocean it should border with china japan and thailand the charu prahar river is empties in this gulf so check out for the correct option jo bhi correct option hai wo aap comment section mein comment karke bataye in the comment section down below you have to participate and write your answer in the comment section down below the second question about the PM Kisan, it's a government responsive program meet to have a financial need and land towns. It provides annual financial assistance of 6,000 to the farmer with three equitable direct benefit transfer. So you have to choose option which among the following is correct whether A, B, C or D and accordingly you can mark your answer in the comment section down below. So this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, queries about test series, programs, and others uh, program that is run by us you can reach out to us we'll be more than happy to assist you for time being i'm signing off thank you so much for continuing state watching and thank you for your time